Good afternoon, families. It's about uh, one till noon, so we're going to give everybody a few more minutes to log on before we officially get started. Exciting to see participants jumping into the webinar. Okay. Well, welcome to our families for our first Family Friday webinar of 2023. We are so thrilled to have you join us and joining the Emory community. Uh, we are recording this presentation and we'll record all of our Family Friday webinar series. So if you can't uh, stay on with us live the entire time today, you can always watch the playbacks, which will be posted on our website. And we're going to go ahead and jump into this week's content so that you can get on with your Fridays. So happy to see everyone here. Welcome. Um, my name is Sherry Ebrahimi, and I'll be joining you um, for these Fridays during the summer as co-host with Sherry Obrens. Um, we love co the Sherry's love to co-present. <laughs> um, my day job here, my official role is the director of housing administration and conference services. So I work in the housing office and we can't wait um, to welcome your student to their home here. Um, but this summer, I'm also serving um, in an interim role, helping out with the Family and Parent Programs Office. So um, I'm really excited um, to, I love working with parents. I am a parent um, and I'm excited to be here. And I'm Sherry Obrens. I'm an associate dean in our Emory College of Arts and Sciences, where all of your students will be starting their academic journeys. Um, I have been co-hosting our Family Friday webinar series for the past six years now. This is our sixth summer doing this. Um, and we love being able to share really important information with parents and families before your students arrive on campus. Um, we realize that this might be your first child going uh, away to college. Maybe it's a second or a third. Um, maybe this is just Atlanta could be new to you. Emory could be new to you. So we really want to make sure that you all feel really comfortable and prepared um, to send your students to campus with us, but also that you know where to go if you have questions um, and concerns throughout the summer or once the academic year has started. Uh, we're also really lucky today to be joined by Emily Talon, who's our Director of Student Records and is going to go over some of our uh, other more detailed information about FERPA and things later this summer. But I'm going to turn it over to Sherry, who's going to share the agenda and other things um, that we're going to cover today. Great. So um, today on the agenda, we just want to introduce the series. And you'll see the two Sherrys all summer. I'm welcoming you. Um, there's also the opportunity for you all to type questions in the Q&A, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. Um, we're going to go over the orientation experience um, today. Um, that's under Sherry's sort of purview, and she'll um, go into detail about the resources always already up and how you can tap into those. Um, as Sherry mentioned, we're so um, happy to have Emily Talent today. I'm here to just talk to you about FERPA. Um, and so you have an understanding of sort of your rights as a parent, what you have access to, what you don't. Um, and also go into the Opus guest access, um, which is important, an important sort of tool, just opt in, opt out for you all to know um, as it relates to FERPA and records. 
And you can see now for the whole summer, um, we hope you choose to spend your time with us. Um, or as Sherry said, the recordings will all be posted. Um, we're gonna go over topics um, next week, immunizations, um, then health insurance, um, accommodations, um, transition of care, that's a personal favorite. Um, as you think about moving your student here, um, we're gonna take the week of July 7th off. Hopefully everyone will be somewhere fun. Um, then we'll really get into the um, advising, registration, housing, dining, res life. Um, and then at the end of July, it's time to talk about the nuts and bolts of actually moving in. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna also um, continue into August with our Pathways Center. Um, that's always a very, very um, popular topic among our parents. Um, and then August 11th, um, Sherry and I will be here to answer all your Q&A questions. As we get closer, we know those are gonna creep up um, and just know that we're both here to be resources um, for you during that open time or any time. Um, we love it um, during orientation and move in when our families come and introduce themselves because they saw us on the webinar. So we are, we are there for you to answer any questions you have on that date. Um, and then after move in, after um, you've transitioned your student here, um, we'll do another one, getting involved in finding your community. So that's what you all have to look forward to on your Fridays this summer. And we hope you will spend them with us. I just wanted to add to, as we're going into this orientation experience overview, there's no such thing as a bad question. Mm -hmm. um, we say this to your students too, as they're starting college, we know transition takes time. Um, and for you as parents and families, transition um, into this new role uh, with your students will also take time. So we've tried to really introduce information and go over information, we call it Emory 101. Um, but sometimes we get lost in our acronyms. Sherry and I collectively have, I don't know, over 40 plus years experience at Emory. And so um, if we're going too fast, if something needs to be repeated, if you have a question or something is not clear, uh, please feel free to put that in the Q&A as well and we can get to it. Um, so I'm gonna introduce our orientation experience to you. Um, we like to say that orientation is an experience, not an event. You'll hear things like that a lot, especially when we get to registration. It's a process, not an event, um, because we know that there's a lot of new information that you and your students need to know, and cramming it all into one day or three or four days just wouldn't get it for you. Um, so we break things up into kind of discrete periods of time, um, and this slide really just gives an overview of what you've already been through. So congratulations, you've made it through the admission cycle, which is no small feat. We're just so proud of you and your students. Um, for getting to this point, so yay. Um, and now we're in our summer onboarding series. Um, and so again, everything that we do over the summer is virtual, web-based, or app-based. Um, we know that we have uh, families and students all over the world, and so we want to make sure that everybody has access to the same information at the same time. Um, we have a new Emory Welcome app, and that's where most of our really important information, including our summer to-do list, and just great info about the university is gonna live. Um, we send bi-weekly communications both directly to your student and to you as the parents and family members. We've created a to-do list organized by month. Um, so hopefully that's already either printed and put up on your fridge or you have access to that in your app. Um, we do these Family Friday series, which where you, you're here, so yay, you're here. Um, your students will get to do advising over the summer with their academic advisors. They'll get to meet orientation leaders and talk to current students and other new students. Um, and they have the opportunity to connect with some Emory alums too. So a lot, a lot happens over the summer um, and, and we can kind of break some of that down a little bit in a moment. Uh, Pre-orientation is optional um, for most of our students. And so we do have a number of programs where students can come a week early um, and do a program based on a theme or a community um, it's great because it really helps promote community building and getting kind of your bearings of campus before the entire class arrives. So we have lots of different tracks. Those applications um, opened in the middle of May, and those should have been included in your communications as well. 
Then we come to the actual orientation week, which includes move in for any students who have not participated in um, pre orientation. And this is where we have some of our really great big signature events. Um, it's the kickoff to the academic year. We have things like convocation with our provost. Um, your first year students get to cross the Emory Gate. It's a great new tradition that we've started. They get to do their first Coke toast. They get to meet with faculty members and other staff members and continue to learn about the great resources here at Emory. Um, and that leads us into the fall semester. So orientation experience does not end um, with the end of move-in. We know that, again, transition takes time. So we have a number of programs in place throughout the fall semester to help continue that transition with your students. A few more details of kind of what the summer looks like. You can, this is just bigger font. I know I have my readers on now too, that I need that. Um, but if you haven't already started getting our summer communications, we do send those every other week um, to parents separately than students. Um, and our information, our contact information is only as good as what your students have provided to us. So if you haven't received any of our communications or materials, um, you'll want to make sure that your student has updated your contact information in Opus. Emily's going to go through Opus in a little bit um, so that we have that. Um, but also know that our website is a great re resource. The Emory Orientation website has a whole family section, um, and we post our previous communications and, and webinars. So if you ever need to go back and look at something, you have access there. Um, we've kind of talked about the other things that we go over in the summer. Um, your students, and, and a lot of these dates are already on your summer to-do list, um, will register online for their classes August 8th through 10th. So that is a time that you want to make sure that you all have internet access. You don't have to be in any specific place. You can be anywhere in the world. Um, but course registration does begin on Tuesday, August 8th. We mentioned pre-orientation happens about a week before orientation. Um, we do expect that all students are then here by Saturday, August 19th for orientation week. Our first day of classes is August 23rd. And then your students will get an opportunity to change their schedules as much as they want through Wednesday, September 6th. There will be a lot more details about that and registration in our Registration Family Feb uh, webinar in, um, in July. And then in the fall semester, um, our weeks of welcome, we have a lot of programming to help orient your students to campus, not only the academic side, but all of the extracurricular side as well. Um, all of our first year students live on campus, which is really fabulous and wonderful, great programming and great support, professional staff and student staff in those areas. Um, and then all of your students are going to be taking two of the same classes this fall. It's probably the only two things that I know, the only two things that everybody will have the same on their transcript. Um, one is called ECS 101, the Emory Edge. This is really a University 101 course to help them continue to learn about academic resources, professional pathways, community building, things like that. Um, and then Health 100. Um, at Emory, we really value health in the most holistic sense of the world, word. Um, so really teaching your, your students about good habits and taking care of themselves physically, emotionally, nutritionally, spiritually, and all of the things um, so that they're leading their best lives both in college and beyond. So that's really the orientation experience. Um, I wanted to highlight a few extra things. I mentioned the first year student to-do list or the summer to-do list. Um, this is housed in our app. It's also been linked in all the communications we've already sent. Um, but this will tell you all of the things that you have to do. And by you, I actually mean your student throughout the summer. Um, and we've really tried to organize them by months. So things that were due yesterday, June 1st, things that will be due July 1st, and things that will be due in August. Um, we've also tried to indicate how much time each of these tasks will take with that little clock icon. Um, you can see most of the tasks are only five to 15 minutes. And so while the list may look long, um, a lot of things are log in and just make sure that your email contact information is correct or um, that your mailing address is correct, things like that. There are a few activities that take some more time. Um, so when your student gets to their academic advising sessions, those are an hour long, um, all online. But all of these, all of these things can be um, completed at home, um, at home base. Nothing happens on campus. Um, this is really a great opportunity too for your student to take the lead on what needs to be done. Um, Emily's gonna talk a little bit more in a moment about some of um, the forms that need to be completed, 
that actually have to be initiated by your students. So as much as you might want to just say, yep, I did it for them, um, there are things that they're gonna have to log in and do themselves. And so um, letting them kind of take control over this list as their to-do list would be a great first step. The next thing I just wanted um, to remind everybody is we have this wonderful app that is open to all of you called our Emory Welcome app. Um, you can either screenshot this QR code or go to your app store and search for Emory Welcome. Um, but this is where we are giving all of our students and you access um, to things that you need to know and probably want to know about Emory before you get here. It includes that summer to-do list and all of the important dates. Um, it has great social media handles that you can follow. It has a whole little section for parents and families there. When we get closer to move in, um, it will have all the details that you need for move in as well. So we've tried to store everything in one place so that you are not searching or mining things from a hundred different websites. We've hopefully done that hard work for you and placed it all within this app. So before I turn it over um, to Emily to talk about what FERPA is and some of the access you have, Sherry, anything in the in the chat that you'd like us to- Yeah, uh, and you flew by this and it went over my head, I'm sorry. The acronym PRA? Absolutely, yeah. PRA is a pre-registration advising meeting. Um, and so all of your students will have an Emory OUE, Office for Undergraduate Education Academic Advisor assigned to them. And there will be an email going out to your students um, with an introduction of who their academic advisor is and directions for how they can sign up for that advising appointment um, in July. So great, thank are, you. Are any of the pre-orientation opportunities open to transfer students? Um, yes, I believe the Ignite ones and the SOAR do have some spots. Awesome. And the course registration rates, I know they're, they're different for transfers than first years. Yeah, so transfer students um, have their or, uh, registration dates in June. And so they've all been communicated directly with that. The transfer students have their own um, to-do list as well. So actually, this is great. This is, we didn't say this, um, a lot of what we're talking about is for our first year students, but we are welcoming new transfer students as well. Um, and so the app um, will actually have a guide separate for transfer students that they have access to starting in June. They'll have their own to-do list as well, but our transfer deposit deadline was just yesterday. So we're um, beginning all of our communications with transfer students and their families um, in the next few days as well. And excited to welcome you, excited to welcome you. And I've already downloaded this app. It is fantastic. You guys don't know how lucky you have it. With, I'm so excited. Um, but Sherry, can you just remind me the password um for the app there shouldn't be a password for the app um it okay. should be open access and so if there are questions about that we can put more directions but once you download it there should be no okay. password. yeah it we might... had a question in the chat okay yeah there shouldn't be one there all right well keep putting your questions in the chat i'll go mute and do those and while i turn it over to emily who's going to start talking about FERPA. hello families um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today about FERPA. Um, I'm also a parent of a college student. So in fact, just uh, just last night, I had my son um, expand some of the access that he gave me as a college parent to some of his um, some of his information. So um, I understand that this is that this is something that you want access to, but um, I want to make sure you understand um, how it differs from, from high school life FERPA. College life FERPA is a little bit different. So FERPA, to start with, uh, that is one of those acronyms and it stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. It's been around since 1974 um, and it affords uh, students the right to protect their student records, and they do this in a couple of ways. One um, facet of it is that consent, written consent, has to be provided by the student before any personally identifiable information is released by the university. Um, and it also gives students the right to inspect their educational records. We don't come across this as much as we do the other. Um, but they have ownership of their student records now that they're in college. And this is regardless of age. They could be 16 years old, 
and enrolled in college, and now those rights reside with them. Um, students may complete a FERPA consent form uh, to release information to other individuals, including you as their parent. Just because you're their parent um, does not mean that you have access to their uh, personal information like grades and so forth. Um, I think we're ready to go to the next slide, Sherry. So without the form, without that consent form filled out, you're gonna have access to what we call directory information. That's, that's basically the stuff that's safe to release about a student and would not be harmful if, if other folks knew about it. So it's basic information like whether or not um, your student is enrolled, um, their address and telephone number, um, the school that they're in, like Emory College, uh, what year they are, if they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, the dates of their enrollment, um, if they're full-time or part-time, if they've earned a degree, what their major is. So that's some academic information that does not require a consent form for us to release. Um, and then there's some extra information like if they've gotten on the dean's list or if they have any other awards, um, if they're participating in sports, things like that. So um, no consent form is required for anybody at Emory University to release this information about your student. I will say that for address and telephone number, um, even though that is directory information and we may release it, it's not our practice in the college to release that information to anybody unless we have the student's consent. We just wanna be a little extra careful with that just to keep your students safe. Okay, so I've mentioned the consent form. Um, and this I believe is on, on a checklist somewhere for you to do this summer or for your student to do, I should say. So um, your student can complete a FERPA consent form. And what that does is it allows them to list specific individuals and they have to list them by name. So that could be you, um, it could be their uncle or their friend. It could literally be anybody, but most often it's you as their parent. Um, but it allows them to list them specifically, and it gives us permission to speak with that person or release information to that person about their academic progress at Emory. So um, if for some reason your child needed to, say, be on academic warning or probation, that letter would... Um, would not necessarily come to you and go to your student unless your student has provided a consent form that allows us to release that information to you. Um, yeah, I think that's all we need to say about that. So the consent form needs to be filled out by your student. You cannot fill it out for them. It has to be their, um, their initiative. And they can also, uh, take back that consent at any time. So that's something for you to know too. They could give you consent tomorrow and take it away next week. And actually, Emily, that's a great point. Yes, it is on the summer to-do list for the students to do. We did put a June 1st deadline on this to-do task. Um, and that was just so that we could space things out. These forms, as Emily said, do stay open in perpetuity, right? And so as long as your student is a, is a um, student at Emory, there's a consent form that they can change. So let's say your student has um, been out of town or hasn't been able to do it and missed yesterday's deadline, it's okay, it stays open. Um, we really try to put the deadlines on things um, so that you're not falling behind or that you don't have a whole mountain worth of tasks to do um, the day before you come to campus. Right, and officially, speaking in FERPA terms, they are students once they start classes at Emory. So you've got you've got a little time to get these things done. And um, my office does a good job of staying on top of those consent forms and updating them daily um, during the summer, weekly during the school year. But um, during the summer when there's a lot of movement on that, we're gonna we're gonna keep on track of those consent forms daily. 
Um, so students can find the consent form by going to the OUE website. Um, and under the A to Z's, they go under F for FERPA. And you can find the FERPA consent form. There's also information there about OPUS guest access. Um, so, you know, I talked about the consent form and where we can just speak to you or whoever your student has named about their academic progress. The OPUS guest access is an electronic way for students to give access to you about different areas of their um, of their record, whether financial or academic, um, via OPUS. So what they can do is uh, give access to uh, up to five folks. I think you can move on to the next slide. Um, they have the option to grant up to five guest accounts. And it's sort of an a la carte menu where they can say for this person, I would like them to have access to my financial information, this person, my academics, this person, both. So they have a lot of options there as to um, what information they want to share. And then you would have your own um, guest access account and you would be able to go in to the student information system, which is OPUS. Online Pathway for University Students, another acronym that you'll hear a lot. Um, and, and you can look at, at uh, the record at any time through that. Um, and like the consent form, students have the option to delete any guest access at any time. Um, yeah. One thing I think that's interesting or fun about this is that your student not only gets to create the guest access, but they get to create the name and the password for these guest access as well. So we've, we've heard some very funny and creative right. um, names, logins, and passwords, but um, that is not something that you as a parent or family member can create on your own. Again, it has to be student driven. Um, right. And as we move to our next set of slides, things you should be talking about with your student, that could we could add that to the list um, as well. Um, so thank you, Emily, so much for sharing that really important information we know. Um, you know, as you're moving from kind of the director role of, of your student's life into more of a supporting role, um, FERPA can, can be a little bit confusing at times, and but really that your student is the driver of most of these processes um, is really important to understand. So we appreciate right. that, Emily. You're welcome. And please uh, feel free to reach out to me or to my team at oue.records at emory.edu if you ever have any questions about FERPA and your student and the college. And, and this question, Emily, just came in through the chat. FERPA can be rescinded at any time. Yes. That students is right. can change their access of FERPA. Um, they can also change access into OPUS or any of the, of the things that they've granted access to at any time. So this really is um, a student, student decisions um, that they, they get to decide. I would say most students are giving access to their parents, right? In yes. many cases. And these are really great conversations to have about why you might need access to things, especially the bill paying. Um, because again, yeah. your students technically are the ones who are receiving the bills, even though most times students themselves are not paying the bills. And so um, important that those things are set up so that you as parents and families get the information you need in order to do your part as well. That's right, because if your child is like my child, not always um, sharing those emails and things with you in a timely manner. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that's a great transition. Um, we are checking on a few things in the chat um, just to confirm there should not be any password needed for the app. Um, but we are checking on that. And if there, if there is something that's prohibiting um, access to the app, we'll make sure that we post that on our website as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to jump in here because yeah. I'm on my app. I have the guidebook and I have the Emory one. So there's not a passcode, I think, for this. We just need to figure out how to pull it up. But the easiest way to pull it up is to scan the QR code that's on these slides. So Sherry's going to post the QR code 
um, when we post the slides. I'm pretty sure it's also on the orientation um, yes. website. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, yes, there may be some passcode situation. It's not a password, um, but to help you find the Emory orientation guide. But uh, the easiest way to just directly get it is to scan the QR code. Great. Um, and we're going to talk about the parent portal in a little bit. So there's some questions about that um, we can go back to and, and other questions that we will see in just a moment. So um, this is a great time to really transition into this segment that we're going to be including every week um, throughout our Family Friday series called Helping Your Student Adult. And Sherry, I'm turning it over to you. This is your, your bread and butter. So, Oh, you're on mute. This is our favorite topic and we'll have little tips and tricks um, as we go through the summer. So this is our first time with you all, um, our first Friday and um, you put in your deposit, we're getting our bills paid. Um, we just want you to start thinking of um, sort of the handoff and the tra transition and every opportunity, um, just, you know, like Emily said, had my son fill this out. Every opportunity you all have um, to have your student do these things for themselves um, is just going to set them up for success, right? And I know it's hard. It's so hard for me because I can do things better and faster. Um, but the most important thing to do right now um, is to think about, you know, they're going to have to do this on their own without you. It's going to be a little bit freeing. It may be a little bit sad, um, but really do everything you can to have them take control um, of the checklist. So, you know, you're still there. You can still be quality control to make sure they've done it, to check in with them. But at this point, you know, the message is they're, they got to do it. Um, so please, you know, log on to the app to explore sort of the different things they can be doing. Maybe um, some of our students need a little more support right now. Some don't. Um, think about how you want to check in and how you start sort of tiptoeing back. And, and it, this isn't, you know, this isn't just all your burden. This is a partnership. So have a conversation with your student. Like, what do you expect? Um, how, you know, how can we be supportive? Um, hey, I'm paying the bills, so really I expect, you know, you to give me FERPA access. This is why I need it. Here's, you know, here's the justification. Do you have access to their grades? I mean, this is all sort of a family, personal decision and conversation, but it's, it would really benefit you to start having those conversations now in June. Um, the summer is going to go by fast. Um, and there's a lot of things on this checklist to go through. Awesome. Um, and these will become, I think the questions that we ask of some of our campus partners who will be our guests have been thinking about things that they wish and hope that parents and families are talking about with their students each week. So the kind of helping your students adult. Um, and we went back and forth about whether what to call this kind of segment, you know, Yes, we know that they are going to be college students, but when when they come to us, we still say you're becoming college students. Like we know that this takes time, um, and your students are amazing, and they got to this point. So we know that they're very capable. Um, but these some of these tasks and some of these responsibilities will be new to them, um, and so we are all here to help support that transition. New life experiences. And, you know, my advice to you um, family members um, is to join the family portal. So this is an opt-in thing. You're not automatically in it. Um, please go to emory.campusesp.com. Um, you'll be able to sign up. We send out periodic updates. Some of them are Emory related. Some of them are just national, hey, you have a kid in college, like interesting topics that are seasonal. Um, I've really enjoyed some of the content um, and articles coming out there, but, you know, it's a great way for you to be connected, um, and it's not, you know, you can read all the updates or not read all the updates, 
Um, there's some parents and family members that want more. Um, so there's, you can spend more time on it, get a lot out of it. Um, and there's some that, you know, these are, there's some really interesting things that come out that are, you are now, um, maybe for the first time, maybe not for the first time um, in this exclusive club of family members supporting students on campus. So it's a great um, way to ask questions, um, have a community and really just stay informed um, about things um, going on at Emory University, maybe going on you know, with your student and what they're experiencing and then national wide trends as well. And actually that brings up a really good point because we've talked about a few different systems here. Um, and if you are, new to college or new to Emory, you'll be like, why are there so many things to log into and so many different forms to fill out? So um, we'll break it down kind of one more time just to make sure it's clear. Uh, OPUS is our official record system. That's where our students will pay bills or you will pay bills. They'll register for classes and things like that. Um, the OPUS access will allow you as a parent or guest access to do things like pay a bill or see grades. Um, FERPA consent is a form that then the results of which live in, in OPUS for us, um, but it's a separate form. Um, and that just tells the university, yep, we're allowed to talk to you about these things, or nope, we're not allowed to talk to you about these things. Emily's shaking her head, so I'm hoping I get that right. That's and right. Then, and then the family portal is just an extra layer of support, as Sherry said, that has really great Emory announcements and just general kind of college trends and articles for them. It's not the official place to see bills or um, records or anything like that, even though I think there are some opportunities for your students to sign up and give you access. It's not the official access. So they're linked, um, but they're separate. And yes, we, we know it's just one extra thing. But um, for parents who just want to know more, 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 more information, more things, that the family portal really is fantastic. Um, and so... Um, we recommend that you sign up for that as well. And I think I saw that somebody said that they were pending or something like that when they tried to sign up. I believe it's an overnight process because there's a lot of information on your student that has to kind of get connected. So um, I'm sure it will work out. You just kind of have to be a little patient um, for now. Um, okay, and so one last question about how they access OPUS as a parent. Again, your student actually has to create guest access for you. Um, and so those are in the to-dos, um, in the to-do list of how they can do that. If you want to re-watch re this as well, you can re-watch that. Um, you can re-watch that as well. So we're going to go ahead and stop our official recording for today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um,